It's that time of the year again where another Call of Duty game has been released and this year it's Modern Warfare 3. A follow up to last year's Modern Warfare 2 and a lot of people are calling it a DLC. But whether you consider it a DLC or not, should you buy it for the hefty price of $70? Let's start with a single player campaign. A campaign that carries on the storyline from Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2. Well, it's the worst one out of the three and quite possibly the worst campaign ever in a Call of Duty game. The only positive about it is that it only takes 3.5 to 4 hours to complete. The story isn't cohesive and just doesn't do enough to keep you interested. It also doesn't provide the linear missions which in my opinion was what made the Call of Duty campaign so good along with the epic set pieces. Now there are still some linear missions in the campaign but majority of the time you'll spend playing the new open combat missions. What these are is you get dropped into an area and have the freedom to approach the mission in any way you want. It's basically single player warzone. And although that might not sound too bad, I think it was an easy way to cut down time on actually producing good quality missions and these combat missions are extremely boring and shouldn't be present in future Call of Duty campaigns. We've gone from classic multiplayer missions like Gillied Up and most recently Clean House in MW19 to these soulless open combat missions that offer no real value and enjoyment to the player. Every time they came up it felt like a chore having to play through them. Now when you put the open combat missions together with a short duration of the campaign it definitely feels like it was a lazy quick attempt at throwing something quick together and dare I say something you'd expect from a DLC. If you're a campaign kind of player I can't recommend this game for you. It feels rushed, lazy and anticlimactic. The worst campaign in Call of Duty history in my opinion and a definite miss. Moving on to the multiplayer which I think is what most people buy Call of Duty for. It's an improvement on last year's experience and a lot better in many aspects but there is a few things I don't like and don't sit right with me but first I'll talk about what I do like. The movement and gunplay has seen a big improvement. Moving around map feels a lot more fluid now and slide cancelling is back, a fan favourite mechanic that was actually a glitch back in MW19. Although it's not identical, it's pretty close and the movement overall feels great. Red dots on the minimap are also back which is what players wanted. It's something that has been at the core of the multiplayer gameplay for decades and it should never have been taken away. Using the minimap on Call of Duty is something that has stayed with me and it's made me use the minimap on other games too. The TTK or time to kill for those who aren't familiar with the term is another positive for me. The TTK on Modern Warfare 2 was way too quick and as soon as you appeared in someone's crosshairs you died within 2 or 3 shots. The TTK this year is slower and I actually prefer it. It allows players a chance to outplay the enemy and makes for more interesting gunfights rather than it boiling down to who saw who first. I also like and dislike the maps. I like them because the majority of them play really well and have got the old school Call of Duty feel to them. There's a few that I think are terrible like Derailed and Wasteland but they were also bad maps back in the original Modern Warfare 2. But I also think it's cheap and again lazy. Just giving players old maps and smacking a $70 price tag on it feels scummy and it's playing on nostalgia. A feeling that these maps bring back to people. However, although the maps are the same, they don't play the same like they did all them years ago. Players play the game differently now and movement is a lot quicker and plays a bigger part in gameplay. So don't go into these maps expecting them to play the same or you'll be left disappointed. Overall the whole marketing of this game has been based on nostalgia which like I said is an easy way to appeal to players but to me feels extremely lazy. The way you unlock things are also tiresome and feel more like a chore rather than making it enjoyable. Unlocks are stuck behind armoury unlocks where you pick what you want to unlock. Then once you've picked that thing the way to unlock it is through doing daily challenges which means you can really only unlock one or two things per day which makes no sense to me especially at the start of the game where everyone is trying to grind and unlock new attachments and weapons. You are limiting players to content and I can't really understand why they've done this. People should be able to unlock things at their own pace and that pace shouldn't be limited and dictated by the game. I almost forgot to mention that weapons and skins carry over from Modern Warfare 2, so if you didn't play Modern Warfare 2, if you buy Modern Warfare 3 you will have over 100 weapons to unlock which is great for content. But now onto the major issue with this game. SBMM or skill based matchmaking. For those that aren't familiar with this and what it means, it's a system in place that puts you in games with equally matched players to create a level playing field for all players. It's mainly in place to stop players that aren't as good in the game to stop playing against good players. They do this hoping that if the worst player isn't being sweated on by the better player there is a higher chance of them sticking around and playing the game. Now on paper it sounds great, however it simply ruins the game. 
Whether you're a bad player or a really good player, you will have times where you will want to pull your hair out playing this game. You can play two, three good games and all of a sudden you'll be playing against players that are way better than you. It sucks all the fun and enjoyment out of the game. And I don't say this because I want to sweat on less skilled players. I say this because every game I feel like you have to be sweating your ass off just to finish with a positive KD and have some sort of enjoyment out of the game. You can't simply jump into a game and take it casually. To me, having skill based matchmaking doesn't make sense on this game because they have the rank mode. That isn't out yet but will be coming out with season 1 which starts in early December. If you have a rank mode that should be the place for people to sweat and test their skills and normal multiplayer should be a casual experience. So even though overall I think the multiplayer is probably the best we've had since MW19 gameplay wise, I think skill based matchmaking just sucks all the fun out of it. Moving on to Zombies which has had a total revamp from its traditional round based structure. Instead of being round based they have now integrated DMZ and Zombies into one mode. You play on the new map Urzakstan which makes Zombies somewhat open world you could say I guess. You have contracts to complete which is the primary way of making money in order to buy perks and pack a punch your weapons. There are also three different tiers on the map, tier 1, 2 and 3. With each tier the Zombies get more difficult and take more damage. Now there is missions to complete, you have three acts filled with tons of missions to do so it's definitely something that will keep you playing for a long time. I appreciate the effort of trying something different for zombies but I always say if it ain't broke don't fix it and I think that applies to zombies perfectly. They had a formula that has worked for decades and players loved it so I feel like this change to zombies wasn't needed at all and I would have preferred the traditional zombies mode. However I don't think this new implementation of it is bad. I think it's still a lot of fun and the missions, and the missions provide enough content to keep you playing. I also like that when you exfil, at the end of the round you get swarmed by hordes of zombies which make for a really intense exfil. I was sceptical going into this zombies mode but I've actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. So to sum it all up and answer the question, should you buy Modern Warfare 3? The answer is no and yes. If you have Modern Warfare 2 and have played it, I would skip this Call of Duty as I don't think it's worth the price tag. The campaign is awful, multiplayer is fun and the best we've had in a long time, but skill based matchmaking ruins the experience 90% of the time. The only thing that it's worth buying for would be the zombies, but paying that price tag just for zombies isn't justifiable whatsoever, but I would buy this game if you didn't play Modern Warfare 2. The same reasons still plague this game, but the sheer amount of content you'll have will keep you busy for a long time and it's a lot better than Modern Warfare 2 was, but at the end of the day this is just my recommendation. The answer really boils down to whether this game is worth $70 to you and are you going to get enough out of the game to justify that price tag. I do feel like certain aspects of this game have been approached and executed in a lazy manner and heavily relied on the nostalgia feel of the old maps. I know that I will get my money worth for this game so I'm not too bummed out by paying that price tag. However, I would never tell someone to pay that price for a game that, let's be honest here, should have been a free update for Modern Warfare 2 or at least a DLC for around $20, which I think would have been received a lot better. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps the channel a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.